a house can get pretty quiet when you're waiting to adopt a baby, and it's been almost three years. That's three years of dinner parties with a lot of the same conversations. So do you have kids? No, we're waiting to adopt a baby. Oh, you know, there are lots of stories about people who adopt and then end up having a baby of their own. And the first time I hear that, I'm really offended because I'm thinking, this is gonna be our own baby. But about the fourth or fifth time I've heard it, I'm kind of used to it. And I realize there's kind of a common belief out there that adoption can somehow lead to pregnancy. <laughs> but the thing is that Julie and I already know we have a less than 1% chance of conceiving together, and we're not putting any hope in that 1%. We're excited that our baby is gonna come from out there in the world. We just wish it would happen a little faster. Yeah, we're, we're hoping it will happen just a little faster, but um, we're dying to bring new life into our home. And one day Julie says to me, how would you feel about going down to the animal shelter to adopt a cat? <laughs> and I think we could use the company. So we go down together and Julie is smitten with this beautiful calico named Mason. He has a bright white chest and a little orange dot on his nose. We tell the lady in charge we'd like to adopt him, and she says, well, there's actually a waiting list of five people for Mason. He's very popular. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, nobody wants to adopt the black cats. So if you'll also adopt little Maya over there, I'll give you both cats. And, you know, I wasn't aware that the animal shelter was doing a two-for-one deal. And little Maya is kind of a skinny little kitten with goop in her eyes. But we really want that calico, so we agree to the deal. And when we get home, we realize that little Mason, the calico, is kind of all beauty and no brains. His one and only trick is to sit in the bathroom sink and drink from the faucet. And he does that trick all day long. <laughs> but Maya is full of personality. That bonus cat, she, uh, she does the spectacular flips in the air. She's feisty, she sneaks around corners. And at night, she curls up in bed with us and just purrs. And that's just what we needed. But you know that thing that people said about how after you adopt, you end up with a baby of your own? <laughs> that actually happens to us. We don't get pregnant, but about three weeks after we adopt the cats, Julie calls me at work and says, I just heard from Beth at the agency, we're gonna have a baby. It's a girl and she's due in two weeks. So after two weeks of frantic preparation and three days at the hospital meeting a whole new extended family, we have a newborn baby in our home. And of course, our daughter Ellie becomes the center of our world. But things get kind of crazy with two cats and a newborn baby in the house. And one sleep deprived August morning, I say, how do you feel about just letting the cats out to explore the yard a little bit? <laughs> And when we do that, Mason, true to form, just walks out and lies down to take a nap on a speed bump in the middle of the street, which isn't a very good sign for Mason. But Maya is ready for adventure. She is jumping from yard to yard. She's nibbling bits of grass. She's chasing butterflies. And she literally stops to smell the flowers. And pretty soon, we're letting the cats out all the time, which makes things so much more peaceful in the house. Except, a couple months later, Julie calls me in tears. Mason got hit by a car. And to our everlasting guilt, we have to put him down. 
and we decide to never, ever let Maya out again. Except now, she knows there are flowers to smell and butterflies to chase, and she just sits in the window and cries like a baby. And we already have a crying baby in the house. <laughs> So we talk it over and we decide to get her a little collar with her name on it and our phone number and I get her a GPS tracker and we start to let her out again. And you know, I've never known why people don't like black cats because Maya is just the friendliest kitty in the world and I find out how many friends she has one day when I let her out and I follow her on my phone with the GPS tracker. <laughs> And she goes a half a mile down the hill, which I decide is way too far. So I go down and I get her. And as I'm walking up the hill carrying her, people at every house we pass are saying hi. But they're not saying hi to me. It's, hi, Maya. How's it going, Maya? Look, Mama, there's Maya. And we worry about her because sometimes she comes back smelling like cigarettes or <laughs> motor oil or patchouli. But, but she's a real survivor and eventually life settles into a routine so that every night, just after dark, I can step out onto our deck and I can just call out, Maya! And every night out of the darkness I hear a little <laughs> And then the sound of her bell as she trots up rubs up against me and goes inside to curl up in bed with our daughter, Ellie. And you know, I'm not sure if Maya thinks that Ellie is her baby or if it's the other way around, but they love each other so much and life is good. Until one chilly September night, many, many years later, when our almost teenage daughter is away on a sleepover and I go out a little later than usual and I call out, Maya! And for the first time in years, I don't hear anything back. And that night I go to bed with a pit in my stomach because Maya's been moving a little slower than usual lately. And we do everything we can over the next two weeks to find her, but we have no luck until the morning after my 50th birthday when Julie wakes me up and says, I had a dream uh, that Maya came back. I think we're gonna find her today. But you know that thing about how sometimes people say that cats go away to die? That may actually be true because that day I find Maya's remains about 50 yards from our house, lying peacefully, and that's really, really hard. But not as hard, of course, as when we have to tell our daughter the news. You know, because whenever she takes stock of her family, her large extended family, my daughter has always had Maya right there in the center next to her mom and me. But, you know, she cries hard. But I'm really proud of our daughter because she grieves for about two weeks. She puts up little poems and pictures of Maya all over the house. And some of those are still up to this very day. But she waits a really respectful amount of time before she comes to me and says, Dad, do you think we could get a puppy? <laughs> Which, of course, means that our house will not be quiet again for a long, long time. <laughs>